Uh, yes, now we can start. Uh, Dr. Joe, please. All right, assalamualaikum and very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's 205. Welcome to the third last session of EBKF Day 3. Thank you very much for your presence today. We have close to 32 uh, participants and panelists for this session. So the session today is titled Global Showcase, EBKF Global Showcase. And I would like to welcome everybody. Uh, and it seems that we have um, participants from all over the world, from Sarawak, from right in Barrio, from uh, the rest of Malaysia, and we have uh, Patricia from Australia. And I think there are a few names, and I believe they are from all parts of the world. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for attending this online session. I think the fact that we are here together in this online session is something, something really wonderful. Um, from Sina in Barrio, I mean, those that probably look at the recording, uh, probably just think that the session is just another online session. But the fact that we have someone from Barrio with us, a lot of people from Barrio, John, Councillor John, uh, and other people is, is actually something really wonderful. So this session, actually, I think we, we make it a bit casual. Uh, we, I think we, we know almost everybody around. Uh, feel free to chip in at any point during the, the session. So the session is from two to four. Uh, probably I'll, I'll list the agenda from for today's session or this afternoon session. Uh, the first thing that we will do after this is to announce the recipient of the Community Scholar, uh, re-announce actually. So last night we have the gala dinner and we officially uh, announced the recipient of the Community Scholar. Uh, but today is very special. We have a few representatives. Later we'll, uh, we'll hear um, a bit of um, words from uh, Puan Sina. Uh, and then later we have Garen, uh, Councillor John himself, uh, Mr. Ramli, uh, to share their thoughts. Um, following that session, we're going to again present some of the showcase last night uh, from Elena Murang, uh, the puppet show uh, from uh, Laura and Yosba. That was really interesting. I, I really loved the puppet show last night. Uh, and then we will listen again to the uh, project by Dr. As Nizam uh, and, and his student and colleague uh, with the sound card. Then we continue with uh, Prof. Nara thoughts about uh, the community scholars and a few other things. And finally, to end the session later today, uh, we're going to invite Farina to announce the EBKF Junior Inventive Challenge, uh, which is actually related to, to TRIS. So that's basically what we're going to do. Um, again, uh, we'll, we'll do this casually. Eh? So let's start with the first agenda, which is the uh, recipient of the community scholars. So last night we had a gala dinner whereby we announced the recipient of community scholar. And community scholar is basically the way we acknowledge the contribution of individuals from the community. Uh, as what uh, a lot of panelists mentioned, uh, Dr. Roger and so on. Um, a lot of us, when we joined the project, uh, we thought that we can share our expertise uh, to the rural community. But at the end of the day, I believe most of us um, actually learn a lot from them, uh, rather we actually teach them. Um, so the point is, um, within the community, there are a lot of knowledge, whether it's explicit or tacit, and there are a lot of individuals with expertise. So the, the recognition community scholars is to acknowledge uh, the knowledge that they have, and most importantly, the contribution that they have uh, provided to the community around them. Uh, and all of them actually do this without expecting any, any monetary re uh, return or awards. But this is, I think, uh, the, the little bit of things that we can do to, to acknowledge their contribution. So let me start um, to, to to announce the list, uh, we have nine recipients of the community scholars. First of all, the recipient of the community scholar is Councillor John Taraway from Barrio. The second recipient of the community scholar is Garen Jengan from Long Lamai. The third recipient of the community scholar is Elias Yesaya from Krayan. The fourth is Mr. Ramli Pasit from Post Lenjang. The fifth recipient of the Community Scholar is Mr. Edwin Meru from Bakalalan. The sixth recipient of the Community Scholar is Jali Gayang from Pusindurut. 
seven recipient and later she will share a bit of her thoughts about um, a few things is Madam Sina Rang Lemulun from Barrio. The eighth recipient of the Community Scholar is Miss Irene Tani Koduyu from Kampung Buayan in Sabah. And the ninth and last recipient of the Community Scholar is Amalina Jasmine from Postcorp. Uh, this is not the end. Uh, the plan for ECT and all the partners is to keep um, working on how we can continue to reward and acknowledge community scholars. There are many, many more in the community, and we will continue to acknowledge their contribution, to highlight their contribution, and most importantly, how we can share their knowledge to the rest of the world. Now, we are very fortunate to have uh, Madam Sina Rang Lemulun from Barrio and would like to invite her uh, to deliver her speech. Uh, Madam Sina, silakan untuk memberikan sepatah dua kata. Thank you. Terima kasih. Salam sejahtera kepada YB Datuk Kerawat dan Datin Isa yang berbahagia Ufisa Datuk Rutur Hamad Kadim Soaidi, pihak Majelis Tinggi Unimas, Datuk Ose Murang dan semua pada hadari, hadirin, saya bersyukur kepada Tuhan karena mari mem memberi ayat hidup saya yang panjang untuk meneruskan pekerja community dan so, so senior kelabih dari dulu sampai sekarang. Saya sangat berterima kasih kepada Yudimas, terutamaannya kepada anak saya, Purvisa Rutur Nararianan, Associate Purvisa Dr. Pulin Bala, Purvisa Dr. Roja Harish, karena mem memberi anugerah community kula ini kepada saya, saya sungguh suka sita sebab Usaha saya selama ini telah dapat pernagaan ini dan pengiktirafan dari pihak Unimas. Sekian kelabit dalam bedang perangkai manik-manik dan mereka bentuk pakaian adat tradisi kelabit adalah menurutkan bidang uh, manik manik saya dari minat saya dari dulu minta maaf dari kecil dari kecil lagi. Saya memohon kepada kerajaan supaya kesenian berangkai manik-manik dan mereka membentuk pakaian adat tradisional kelabit dan begitu juga komuniti ingin 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 dapat ditampakkan dalam kurikulum sekolah kita supaya warisan kesenian kelabit atau community lain lain tidak pupus di di kalangan generasi anak anak muda oh, 
Hari ini adalah 27 Oktober merupakan satu tarik yang istimewa yaitu bersua bersamaan bersamaan dengan, dengan ulang tahun ke-15 kemudian suami saya telah meninggalkan kita maka saya di di pekasikan di pekasikan anugerah istimewa ini untuk dia sebagai penaragaan mengenangkan jasa, jasa saya jasa sebagai sumber inspirasi, inspirasi kepada, kepada saya dulu. Terima kasih, eh, Tepemu. Sekian. Sekian, terima kasih. Terima kasih, Tepemu. Sekian, terima kasih. Terima kasih, beri masa saya bersangkap. Itu saja, terima kasih. Terima kasih, Ngemu, Puan Sina. Thank you very much. Very inspiring. Thank you very much. Really appreciate As I mentioned, Puan Sina is actually talking from Barrio. <laughs> we have been to Puan Sina shop in, in Barrio and it's really wonderful uh, for the women folk in Barrio to come up with the uh, beats. Uh, those that are interested, you can search about the beats uh, from Barrio. It's really uh, it's a treasure, actually. Um, and and if you can get one, which is not easy, uh, please get one from Barrio. Uh, next one, we would like to invite uh, Garen Jangan from Long Lamai to share his message. Mr. Garen, silakan. Concerning the impact of telecenter, telecenter brought our community faster in the making use of technology if compared to the distance from urban area. For example, easy for our children to do this, uh, their study. Uh, most of our community depend on technology to do their work. Concerning the I words, what will never be able to do justice to what they mean to me in order to take their time to be interested in what i was doing thank you thank you very much that was the recording that mr garen long lamai um very insightful um words from from him and uh, next, um, John, I, I will get you last. Um, we would like to invite uh, Mr. Ramli from Post Renjang to say a few words. And um, the last one is Councillor John. Selamat petang kepada Dr. John dan kawan-kawan semua. Da dari sa saya di sini, uh, kami di Post Renjang ni semua baik, tak ada apa-apa. Cuma sekarang kami musim selesema. Sekarang kami di Pos Renjang pun PKPD. Ada yang boleh keluar, ada yang tak boleh. Hmm, saya amat gembira kerana rakan-rakan kita dari pihak Unimas masih ingat dekat saya di Pos Renjang, dekat kami di Pos Renjang. Berkenaan dengan soalan Dr. John tadi, saya ingin menerangkan tentang diri saya sendiri. Dulu saya sekolah di Tapah, sekolah menengah Hamid Tahan, Tapah, sehingga tingkatan lima, lepas itu saya berhenti. Saya mempunyai anak sebelas dan dua orang ibu, yang satu dah meninggal, yang satu masih ada. Anak, anak lelaki, tujuh, enam orang, anak perempuan ada lima orang lebih kurang lah saya lupa dah <tapi>, tapi semua semua duduk kampung lah 
ada yang bekerja kerja pilang kerja kerja PGA satu orang uh, yang kawin Melayu ada ada satu orang yang Cina satu orang yang ada di kedai di rumah saya itu yang lain semua kawin orang asli bahaya nak jalan jadi sumbangan tadi seperti sumbangan saya tak adalah JKK pun dilantik secara otokurasi saya bukan ada duit saya bukan ada alam tak ada apa-apa sumbangan saya kuah nunggang hanya itulah kalau kita tak gagal hari itu cuma telesenter itulah sumbangan saya yang bertempur semua saya pergi ke Sabah ke Sarawak, ke kerjaan Malaysia minta ke ini mas jadi lain-lain tak ada tak ada apa-apa seperti biasa jadi itulah sekian terima kasih Thank you very much. That's, that was the recording uh, from Mr. Ramli uh, from Post Lenjang. Um, so Post Lenjang is one of the uh, telecenter site under the TIPA project led by uh, Dr. Pauline, AP Dr. Tan and so on. Yesterday there was a session, probably I just want to take a few minutes to um, state a few things. Yesterday there was a session of discussion um, from a few uh, team members from ECT. Then what what um, probably attracts me to the presentation. Um, some of us, including myself, uh, when we visited Telecenter when it's already completed, uh, like the post in the and so on, and we look at it and we look, wow, there is a Telecenter. But behind the scene, from the beginning, not just the construction of the Telecenter itself, the engagement. Uh, yesterday, they were sharing that the engagement with the uh, Orang Asi community goes back 2011, the construction itself, I think 2016, 2017, and so on. Uh, I was fortunate to visit the launching of Post in the Road with Prof Nara and the VC when it's already completed, looks beautiful and everything. But yesterday when I saw how difficult it is to go there, uh, Dr. Tan and the team, and so on. And, and it's the same story with all the telecenter, uh, Barrio, Boyan, and so on. Uh, the amount of effort taken by uh, the member of, of the team, starting from uh, back Roger Harris, 1999. Um, you have to explain it in order to understand how difficult it is. I think words through books and paper uh, does not give justice to the uh, hardship and trial and tribulation of the team and also the community. So not to forget, community plays a very important role as well. So the recipient next that we would like to invite is uh, none other than Councillor John Tarawi himself. John, a few words from you. Always love to, to hear you talk. Okay, thank you very much, Associate Professor uh, Johari. A very good afternoon to all in the Zoom. Uh, protocol observe. I think a lot of uh, us, uh, maybe all, uh, didn't know my story. Lah. Maybe it's uh, time for me to uh, to tell everybody. You know, after my tragic uh, straight, uh, tragic plane crash on the third of September, nineteen ninety one, killing my father, my uncle, cousin, along with uh, nine other community headmen and leaders, it's quite um, a big trauma uh, leadership gap. With the impact, I suffer. Uh, brain hemorrhage, three fractured spine, three broken ribs. I spent like six months in Kuching Hospital. I also uh, <clears throat> diagnosed uh, suffering from uh, the so-called post-traumatic disorder for years. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. By God's grace, I survived the ordeal. Searching for my soul and destiny, you know, I realized I got a calling to be with the community. Though I, I think there's a more green pasture beyond, and I think I should be able to do well as well. 
I want to uh, say here, I'm truly very honored and blessed with the recognition as a community scholar. From my heart, I would like to thank uh, EBKF 8, Unimas, for doing this pos possible. A very thank you to my partner in crime, my friend uh, Groto Gatum and Dr. Roger Harris. We spend a lot of time provoking each other, see a lot of wild dreams. And then uh, IBKF, Ibareo Knowledge Fair is one. Professor Dr. Karudin Gatuman Balatau, uh, now a family to us. Dr. Alvin Yo, um, alias Parantamulut. And of course, Associate Professor Dr. Paulin. Though we always argue all the time on protocol and belief, I think I'm entitled to because we are very close uh, family and uh, friend as well. We know each other since young. And of course, uh, I'd like to thank Professor Nara. I never can mention uh, actually his full name, which is quite long. <laughs> Nara, we Nara. Our, yeah, we share our um, pastor's son background and we never stop discussing whenever we meet each other. It always never ending meeting. And he believed in me. Though I got other awards uh, and recognition from somewhere else, I think these uh, awards to me is quite an extra special and meaningful in my journey of life. After being attached to Ibareo, Radio Bareo, so-called Pastor Nukenan, a uh, fellow, a research fellow uh, with uh, Cori, now it's called ICT, Unimas, for maybe more than 20 plus years, you know, with the challenges, the up and down, pressure from the community, uh, the outside world, and then I, the touch base with the community, community protocol, out of community mobilization, creating the, the non-stop excitement, solving needs and problems faced by the community and etc. I think uh, EBKF uh, is uh, organically grown and established. As I remember how it is started, allow me to share uh, my version. Amongst the wild and impossible dream we discussed and with Dr. Roger Harris Gatuma, Gatum, Pauline was then uh, doing her master's in Cornell. She's not associate professor Pauline then. The idea of, uh, first the idea of indigenous international conference, which is IIC, uh, we call it then. And then I think uh, surely uh, Dr. Roger will remember that because we would want to make it catchy and attractive. So become indigenous international conference, you know, IICT. So it uh, come to an idea as we discuss to become e Barreo and then now e Borneo. Actually, uh, the whole idea to me la, is a lemon and the grassroots is about how to blend or merge academic uh, with the grassroots to enhance more knowledge or gain more traditional knowledge. The idea of bridging the academic and the grassroots. I always uh, joke, said the farmers will know the art of farming, A to Z, because they're doing it for life. Professors are trained to read books in three days or four days. They also know the theoretical AZ about farming. So I was thinking of merging both world, the academician and the uh, grassroots to enhance more knowledge and benefit both theory and practice. I am glad and honored to be uh, the chairman uh, or the so-called uh, co-chairman of the uh, first Ibareo Knowledge Fair together with Dr. Harris. And I also co-chair the second um, Ibareo Knowledge Fair together with uh, Dr. Pauline. 
And then the third one, I also honored to co-chair the third one with Dr. Alvin. I do learn a lot from those experience, you know? So at one time we are talking about, because the community can sit down and wait and listen for the 40 minutes, 45 minutes allocated for presenter. So we want to summarize all those things into 10 minutes where 10 minutes is the presentation and 30 minutes is the, uh, the Q and A because I know the community quite enjoy asking rather than listening. So we try to praise uh, the presenter and I know Dr. Valerie was asking, this is too short. We cannot deliver in 10 minutes, but uh, we are talking about that and how to really learn and how to uh, get input to maximize uh, the outcome, uh, the knowledge. And then we also through all this while, the art of reverse psychology approach, which uh, we applied and I do apply it all over uh, the place, you know? And then um, I think it work with all the experience and involvement with, with the big family of Unimas, and of course, uh, Dr. Roger Harris, it bring me to uh, the world stage and global exposure. I am blessed and lucky being part of this big family of Unimas, their mission of uh, community engagement and outreach. Then um, with that, uh, I would like uh, to thank everybody in the Zoom again, and God bless all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor John Taraway, for the speech. Um, and um, what Mr. John Taraway mentioned uh, is also applicable to all the recipient of Community Scholar. Uh, we really appreciate your contribution. Um, and this recognition is, I think, just a very small effort from our side to recognize your contribution. Uh, I don't think whatever we do is enough to um, reward back whatever that you have contributed to the community. Once again, thank you very much. So we go to the second agenda for today, um, whereby we would like to recap some of the performance from last night gala dinner. Uh, we had three performances from last night. Uh, the first one is a song from Elena Murang. Uh, we are not playing the video. Um, later, the recording of last night session will be provided. If you are interested, you can always uh, watch the recording again. Uh, but this session, we would like to give a little bit of details about the session last night, whereby we didn't have the time to actually explain in details. So the first one is Elena Murang. Um, a club song entitled Gituan, which means the stars, inspired by the club culture since time immemorial till the present. And it track, um, the track refers a story of the forgotten club old cosmos belief. Those that have been to Barrio, then you probably will understand um, why such song can emerge because over there, there is no light pollution. You can see the beautiful night sky with all the stars, the galaxies, and so on. So it's, it's a beautiful place. Uh, those that haven't been there, please go there once in your lifetime. You will never regret it. So the song was initiated, initiated by the late Tepu Ngalino Karu. Uh, so that's, that's the, that was the first performance from last night from Alena Murang. The second performance is the uh, musical puppet show titled Apai Saloy. The music composed and directed by Laura Prati Tutom and Yosba Jelani. The puppeteers are the students from year 2013. So a little bit about the puppet show last night. Um, children at the early age of attending preschool and primary school classes do not have su suitable visual ability, allowing them to learn and enhance their imagination capabilities. So folk tales have been one of the main approach in order to um, get the children to learn how to communicate using storytelling. So these folk tales can teach children many moral values. 
there are no methods currently available which could, could, could enable the children to easily understand the folk tales to associate them with moral values. So Apai Siloy, the main objective is to convey the moral values through a musical puppet show. Uh, very interesting. Again, if you happen to uh, have the chance to view the recording, please watch them. I really enjoyed last, last night. It was fun. It was funny. Uh, and and you, you probably don't believe that the puppeteers are actually uh, the school children. So that was the second performance. And the last one is the project by Associate Professor Dr. Has Nizam, one of the lecturer from the Faculty of Creative Arts, Unimans. Uh, he and his colleague and student uh, made sound and video recording from Taman Negara Mulu. And the sound recording uh, is actually natural sound or, or audio from frogs, birds, uh, insects, and so on. So while we listen to uh, the so-called Baklalan sonic sound card, we will listen to a few uh, word of wisdom from none others. Prof Nara, are you ready? No, uh, yes, I'm ready. I mean, so that you're, you're done, is it, uh, Joe? So you yeah. want to... I call them to play the sonic sound card as the background music, and while the the sound is playing, you can uh, say a few words. Um, um, uh, we'll hear the sound, and then uh, when I talk, they will play the music. All right, okay. Please start. Thank you. Uh, cover his talk. very warm afternoon to everybody. Uh, today has been truly me moving for me because the community scholars who was appointed yesterday, I mean, it's, uh, it's a long thought process from our team in ECT Unimas, where we, we had no clue how to somehow appreciate in a, a more formal way all the wonders, all the thoughts, all the time, all the experience, all the sharing of all these wonderful people. I mean, well, here we saw already nine individuals who committed a major part of their life to bring a better life for many people. So it's a small gesture from us as what Dr. Johari says. So it is something that uh, will change my life forever. So thank you to all you wonderful, uh, I mean, family members of mine. I mean, all of you are family members and I, I just wish that God will bless you with many more years ahead to do more wonderful jobs. And we hope to also appreciate the other community scholars who are, are continuously working with us and uh, will also start working with us soon. Right. So with that, I'll just... Uh, highlight some of the things that EBKF 8 has seen. So I, I cannot cover all the things because there's just too many things that happen. I mean, it's a life-changing conference in some sense, if you want to call it a conference, right? So next. Okay. Uh, well, uh, smile next thing. Uh, well, as you're, as you're hearing the background uh, water, I mean, I, I just wanted to speak from Bakalalan today. So that's why it's an effort to do that. This was uh, just a thought, and I didn't know whether it will work very well on Zoom, right? So since we still need to refine it, I, uh, forgive me if it doesn't work well, right? Uh, I think I have to say I am a child today who's learning. That's all I can say. Every moment, we are all discovering some new experience. And for me, I have to say, me, uh, this is individual in the sense, I know I have made mistakes. I know that many things that I try to do did not work. But the blending of multiple points of views from all the wonderful people we have been working with. I mean, uh, my... Uh, my, my own 
family really i mean uh, that's that's really what i can say i mean all family members including the fellows like uh, dr pauline uh, dr roger right councillor john right uh, dr johari i mean that that they are there're just too many people for me to mention uh, including uh, dr john who's always with us here right so all of you have have really allowed me to move along in ect so so this is really uh, another thing that i wish to highlight this year's ebkf has been a, a platform for learning for me and i hope for many of you as well next there are some some interesting things that's coming out which is as as we mentioned about moving from experiment to mainstream how about turning all schools into innovation hubs well it sounds like a tall order but it is already starting to happen right not only schools also communities particularly indigenous communities but open to every other community so that's really a, a dream to be realized in the very very near future next Well, thank you. Uh, well, many of you may not have realized that we have four interns from the uh, faculty of uh, 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 language, faculty of social science, and faculty of cognitive science. I mean, we had four of them from these three faculties, and they were working on trying to promote our program through social media. So you would have seen all this countdown, and then we are also doing all sorts of data mining at the back dr jo uh, this is something that for the first time we are beginning to mine social media and uh, let me tell you the nice thing about this the nice thing is the number of people who saw ect's media is about 9000 over people on instagram and 1800 people on facebook so so this is really truly a remarkable number i mean it's hard for me to imagine how so many people came and saw what we are doing right whether they liked it or not they came and they already acknowledge what we are doing they could uh, somehow contribute in some small ways so what we are looking forward to from ebkf now on is to see how these measures could help us as community friendly analytics right so this would be one of the research areas that uh, we in the computer science faculty can proceed next slide please and this slide was shown on the first day all that i want to highlight is this is still a dream it's already starting to happen grassroots innovation and community mobilization covering a larger area than just the highlands right reaching to a further region is has always been a dream of many of the partners that we have been working when i whenever i mention this word everybody seems to say well this is it and then we have been working there you know in a way they all i mean even uh, dr polin for example or, or dr roger i mean it's it's just like it's in our blood somehow so i, I i'm not so sure how that happened but it is really probably the communal spirit that we have in unimas so it is something that is guiding us to flow as a river in this direction continuously next slide please now this is a miracle for me how ebkf can be turned into a workshop with support of facilitators on the ground it is definitely a miracle it is a milestone it is a new journey for us next slide please so well, we have people centered participatory governance i mean participatory involvement in decision making policy making uh, from people from the grassroots is now a reality and we are we have already started seeing glimpses of this next slide please and well i mean don't worry if you can't read it's not intended for anyone to read it's just to show that when we created this well it's not only ect it's a, a joint project with the institute of borneo studies 
and all the research fellows. Well, we have over 50 research fellows, and this is what I say, a co-created content for a co-created program for a conference or an unconference, right? So this is something which is ongoing. So it's it doesn't look, it looks complete, but in my mind, there's still many more things we could have done and many more things we could have done better, right? So this is an effort, a pioneering experiment of some sort, but it is truly remarkable. And I can say that I feel blessed because we have such a wonderful team in Unimas that can imagine how we can co-create a conference with the community in a rural, in a virtual mode. And some of the communities are so inaccessible that they can't even go and correct something if something didn't work in some place. So it's really very hard to imagine, but it is a dream that is becoming a reality. Next slide, please. So we saw today morning uh, the works of Elena Murang and group. I think she's got such a wonderful team. And uh, we, we saw a talk on mapping our cultural stories from the Bournemouth University. Uh, we, we saw a number of people coming from NGOs or, or the government, you know, various agencies and uh, stakeholders. We were all looking at creating content, innovation becoming media that could help some other people, repurposable media. So this is really that can help to innovate places, innovate individuals, innovate movements, right? So this is really a direction that we see. And the beauty of all that happened over the past five days is all these are converging into a kind of resource, a kind of repository that we can build on. And many people who, who I come across, they tell me that let's do it without thinking much. Looks like everybody is hungry for what we have to do next. And having a common vision is already a big bonus. And that's the beauty in some of these ideas that are emerging. Next slide, please. So this uh, workshop that we saw is for me what I would call sustainability oriented innovation. Innovation that looks at how we can create value for communities based on what they know is best for them rather than what someone from outside may think is good for them, right? So this is already a dream. And today when I heard uh, Sina Rang say her part, I know that yesterday's award is not the end. It is just a start of a journey where we in Unimas will be walking together with all these wonderful personalities who will be part of Unimas and we can do things much better. They will help us to go to Scopus and other publications. Whatever KPIs are going to be thrown at us, they might have a better way of doing it a communal a communal way of doing things in a better manner without fighting for some uh, short-term benefits, right? So this is really what I could imagine as a future. And we saw what community scholars celebrating them is all about. I, I, I cannot actually put a closure on this because this is something that's going to be going on and on and on and on because it is such a big thing. It is one of the biggest thing that has happened in Unimas. So it's not like we have honored these individuals as community scholars, that is not the truth. The truth is Unimas is honored to have the community scholars that we have worked with. Thank you, thank God for this association. This I already mentioned. We need to look at how we can harvest traditional knowledge from no matter no matter where. We saw a presentation from Canada today. The, they were saying exactly the same thing: how to collect media, how to present it in a much more natural way. So we are looking at all common themes, and if we can start harvesting 
folk songs, folk music, folk traditions of all sorts, and put it in some way that everyone will be able to access resources that may possibly deplete or become extinct before it actually happens, right? So in a way, we are going to help the world to become a better place where all these minority languages will not lose their life. Multi-partnership knowledge platform. My intention was not to fill up this slide with as many logos as possible. It, it is definitely not, though it may looks like, like, look like that, but it's just like every project that we work with is an incremental effort towards moving towards the right direction. So as we become more and more inclusive, this is really an effort to be more inclusive, multi-partners to reach a common goal. As you grow together, you become stronger and we would be able to bounce back stronger together. Thank you for, for this opportunity to share these thoughts with all of you. These are not my thoughts. This is our thoughts. I mean, it's, it's something that's growing in me. And I hope that we together can make it the most beautiful dream for everybody. A dream that not want, makes us want to sleep. The dream that makes us wake up every day much, much more stronger. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Thank you very much for those words. Just to highlight a few things before we proceed, uh, this session is the EBKF Global Showcase. Uh, we uh, should end by 4 p.m., probably slightly earlier. After this, there is another two sessions. Uh, the next one is Miri City as a Future Smart City. That one is at 4.10 p.m. to 4.40. And finally, the last session for EBKF is at 4.50 p.m. today, which is the closing ceremony. Uh, please attend the closing ceremony later today. So the next agenda, according to my list just now, is actually the presentation of awards for the innovation competition. But before we go to that, we'd like to welcome everybody. Uh, I can see uh, a few people join us. I assume those are from the school. Welcome to all the schools, the teacher and the students to this global showcase session. Uh, but I would like to probably call upon a few people to just share a few thoughts since we still have time. Maybe I'll start with uh, Dr. Pauline first. Dr. Pauline, anything you would like to say? Um, yeah, I guess um, not much really, but um, what um, taken me aback is actually to also to hear the, to hear the, the the appreciation of the community scholars, how much our recognition last night meant to them and actually affirm their own position and status and their roles and responsibilities in the various communities they are working with. I think it got me to think about for us here in the university, we have some mechanism to affirm our standing as you know, position as experts in our field. And I realized that in equal measure, also those community scholars that we are engaging with needs that kind of, of, of affirmation in a sense, in a sense of in a in a sense of recognition to to their own skills as knowledge repository, uh, knowledge holders and leaders in their own community at par with us. And oftentimes I think one of the, one of the um, setback of modernization theories, which was developed in the 1950, late 1950s after the World War II is basically to come up with the notion of underdeveloped and developing nation. The, and, and within that context, the rural areas is considered underdeveloped and therefore People living in rural areas, remote areas, come into the come into the category of being left behind. They are, they are not um, developed in 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 many ways. In a sense, they can't cope with progress. Therefore, they they remain behind. But I think our 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 work since 1999 basically 
um, turn that notion around. And and last night is is a, I mean from Nara said it's a big thing in Unimas. Maybe we think it is it, that is just a cliche, but actually it is it's turning a lot of things around in terms of our own perception about knowledge. And and John actually uh, and actually it's the first time I've I've heard him saying it in a way that is. Um, in, in a sense, in, in, in a scientific term, in terms that we've been talking about between theory and practice and making relevant the knowledge that we hold in the university and, and bring it to the local communities. But actually, like what Joe was saying, we learn a lot from them in a way that is also changing the way we think about our own discipline. I remember a conversation I had with uh, Prof. Karudin years ago. We were in Barrio going through um, the challenges with e barrio and making possible, you know, in all the technical things that we need to we need to deal with. We were seated in uh, Juan Lucy's um, house um, in her living room, and she turned to me and said, "You know, uh, Pauline, I one of the things that I really appreciate about this whole thing." is basically you taught me to think about engineering in a very different way. When he said that, I was thinking, I said, wow, okay. Uh, it, I, I can never go back to the old way that I look at engineering. And, and I think we all went through that in a way that the baptism of fire in a sense through all these project, projects that we have engaged with. We don't look at our disciplines, our comfortable, you know, the, our academic discipline in the same way that we did, we used to. And more so in the current situation, in the current scenario that is happening around the world, the idea that it's not just one knowledge system that exists, but the increasing recognition of the existence of multiple knowledge systems. So I think it's, I guess for us here in Unimas, we take it for granted. Um, and it is it's our second nature. It is not unusual for me to have coffee with Joe or Nara or, or Roger. They are all technical and they are all, you know, uh, technical people in a sense, uh, in, you know, engineers and technologists. But for us, it's like going for coffee and talk about projects. Cross-disciplinary is not an issue, but in many parts of the world, it's such a problem. People are struggling to talk across disciplines. So I think this is some, uh, this is the strength of the university. I think we need to nurture it, talk about it, write about it, promote it, educate our students about it, promote it, is, it in our postgraduate um, studies, in our FYPs, and so on and so forth. So, because that's the way forward. Um, so, thank you again, uh, Sinarang and uh, Councillor John and Ramli and everyone. Um, you all have taught us. Um, uh, in many ways. So like what uh, Joe is saying that this community scholars recognition and award is just a small thing that we can give in, in return to all the things that you all have taught us about ourselves, about our disciplines, about our university. And, and, and so thank you very much. And I think David, uh, I know David uh, Labang is here with us listening in as well. Um, uh, and, and, and he and Lucy has been very, very instrumental. Also, um, David was the first one to house Unimas in Barrio. So that's where the, one of the roots of this e Barrio project is. So we thank you, David. You also have taught us a lot about the world. I uh, thank you. Thank you, Joe, for this opportunity. Thanks, Dr. Pauline. Yep, I still remember. I think the first trip that I, I made to Barrio, we stayed at uh, Lucy and David house. Uh, that, that was really, really nice, actually, uh, beyond expectations. So thank you for the hospitality. Um, I, I really wish I can go back and hopefully soon. Um, maybe just my own personal thought about community scholars, listening from Councillor John, uh, the recording from Garen, uh, and also Mr. Ramdi just now. Uh, the, the term that we use is community scholars. Uh, two things that probably I can add to that. I think ECT under Prof. Nara, Pauline, and also uh, Dr. Roger um, will think about the next step, how to properly acknowledge the community scholar by probably issuing uh, a certificate. Um, 
as I mentioned just now, the community scholars have knowledge and expertise in various domains. They don't go through formal education, but the knowledge that they have accumulated over the years uh, is valuable. There's, there's no doubt about that uh, and can be recognized. Um, and the second thing is, uh, listening to Mr. Ramli just now, uh, of course, from our side, we can issue the, the, the award or recognition and give the term community scholars. But from different individual, hopefully we can um, align the recognition to probably their needs. Uh, maybe for Mr. Ramli and, and the, the, the community, uh, if the recognition can bring additional income to them. So maybe they can give trainings, we can recognize the trainings that they, they, they deliver and they can generate income for themselves and the community. That's one way. Um, for John, maybe it's Apple C or Apple A uh, to, to be recognized uh, a, a formal, I would say, award uh, equivalent to a master or PhD uh, and, and various other ways. So what, what I suggest, uh, maybe there is a need to consult the community themselves and the people that has been awarded. Uh, what they want as part of recognition. I think the, the, the recognition as the title of community scholars is good, but uh, I believe there is much that can be done in order to benefit the individuals that receive the award and the community that they are uh, together with. Uh, maybe I would like to call uh, Dr. Roger Harris uh, to say a few words about this. Roger? Yeah, okay. Thanks, thanks Joe. Well, thanks, Nara and, and Pauline. I mean, I can only echo um, everything that's been said. And um, thanks, John, for your comments. But I was, you know, my, th my thoughts, <clears throat> thinking back on earlier discussions we've had around the concept, that um, it's absolutely right that we should acknowledge the contribution of these peoples uh, for all the good reasons that have already been pointed out. So but let's, let's look at this as a beginning rather than an end, because um, I, since I'm Pauline and I had a quick chat last night, since then um, I lost some sleep thinking about what might come next in a sense. <clears throat> so I'm just bouncing ideas around in no particular order. Um, so what does it mean to, to, be, um, to be recognized as a community scholar? Is it just an award, a handshake, a pat on the back? Uh, a big, big thank you. Or does it acknowledge a role that that, is, that that has already begun in which we would hope would actually continue? And how can we strengthen that continuance? So the original proposal, which um, I think most of you have, I just, I'll put down a few ideas. Um, so just to remind ourselves, uh, perhaps uh, mentoring, you know, we can set up mentoring between academics and individual scholars as appropriate. Although I think actually sometimes the mentoring works the other way around as, as John has mentored me <laughs> and probably a few others of us uh, on community uh, mobilization issues. But maybe we can partner up in such a way that uh, the scholar has an avenue, an easy av avenue and access into the resources of the university. Some of those resources may be particular skills training Perhaps we can um, curate uh, training courses for community scholars that would strengthen their ability to perform the kind of roles that, that they would want to do and which would help us as a team advance our programs. And again, as um, Nara has already demonstrated during, the, during this program, all that can be done online. I mean, we don't need massive travel budgets and accommodation and classrooms full of people. Uh, it's very easy nowadays with the tools that we have at our disposal to put training material online, which can be uh, re reused at very, very low cost. And I'm thinking that the pe these people would possibly perform roles in particular projects that we implement uh, as they already have done. Uh, as we described John as a project manager for, uh, for eBario and other related projects. So that might be an area for skills development to provide some training in project management. And also, of course, which has also been mentioned, 
the, uh, the role of coordinating service learning. So here again, I think there's exposure to more skills that could be um, uh, devolved to uh, community representatives, community scholars, as we now call them, to coordinate service learning, you know, in line with Cornell and anybody else. Uh, so that's one thing. Well, it's several things actually, but just picking up what, what, what you mentioned, so again, are we deciding something coming from outside and imposing it on, on, on people, which is not really in line with our ethos? So what I'd like to suggest is we, we ask these, this group of people now, it's a significant and powerful group of people, what would they want out of this program? So how about we organize some kind of uh, seminar or workshop online so that we can um, brainstorm uh, around the idea of, of what they would like and out of that, pick up the things that everybody would appreciate and which can be um, implemented. And then there are other little things like, <clears throat> can we have a badge or a medal or, or a hat or a shirt or a jacket or something that they can wear with pride, you know, in, uh, in their community, the way I wear my shirt or wrong side, sorry. Something like this that has the logo. I am a Unimass community scholar. Hmm. Uh, I think, I mean, my, my, my understanding of local cultures is that would be highly appreciated. But beyond that, can we more formalize the, um, uh, the program in the sense that we used to talk about communities of practice. So bring them all together as a team, set them up in some kind of online dialogue, whether it's Facebook or WhatsApp or something better, build a website that explains the program and highlights the, these people um, with, and, and promotes their contributions, and maybe even produce a handbook to describe what the program is, um, and get contributions from the individuals, what they would want to express. I mean, we aren't going to ask people to write lengthy papers, but tell us, get them to tell us what they would like so that we can record it and uh, make it part of the program and formalize it within something like a handbook. And let's put all this stuff online so that we can show the world how Unimas is operationalizing its claim to be a commute, what is it, community driven university back to you thanks roger thank thanks you. roger for yep thanks roger for the thoughts um a few things there yep i think it's in line of uh, the direction that the team is um looking at and i i totally agree that we we need to look at what their needs uh, in terms of um additional um assistant uh, on top of the uh, title community scholars um, Dr. John Pua mentioned that, yes, uh, there should be a physical session uh, once the situation allows, whereby maybe Unimas can organize um, a proper award ceremony, eh, Prof. Nara. And um, before we proceed, um, I would like to read the message from Irene Tani, one of the recipients of the Community Scholars. Uh, Irene Tani is the local champion from Kampung Buayan uh, in Sabah. So Kampung Buayan is uh, within, I mean, walking distance is within uh, one cigarette, which never being lit. <laughs> That's what they told us. Uh, it's not that far. It's not that far. It's just uh, one cigarette away. Uh, but the point is the cigarette is never lit. So it ended up being a 12-hour strike during those days back in 2008. Beautiful, beautiful place, Kampung Buayan uh, at the Crocker Range there. Uh, and Irene has been instrumental in assisting the Unimas team and uh, Dr. Jane uh, to set up a telecenter there. And the message that uh, she sent to Prof. Nara just now, let me try to read that to all, to all, to all of you. Eh? Uh, from Irene, terima kasih atas penganugerahan daripada Unimas. Thank you very much from, for the award from Unimas. Kata-kata yang uh, disampaikan dapat membetingkatkan lagi semangat kami untuk meneruskan pelayanan di dalam gereja, keluarga, mahupun dalam komuniti. Terima kasih sekali lagi. Tuhan memberkati kita semua. Amin. So that's uh, her message. She said that thank you very much for the uh, award. And the award will uh, 
increase the uh, resolve and effort uh, in working together for the community uh, as what they, are, they have been doing and doing now. Can I also, if I interject? Sure, Dr. Sure. Pauline, please. Sorry. Yep. There is also a note from Elias Yesaya from um, Krayan. He said, um, uh, where he wrote in in Klavit, in, in the Indian language, and also later on he said, um, Mutudo, we Elias. I said, um, I'm Elias. Merasa tersanjung malam ini sudah mendapat penganugerahan yang sangat berarti dari pihak Unimas dan IBKF ke-8. Diucapkan ribuan terima kasih atas rekomendasi atas pencapaian ini. Dengan rasa gembira dan syukur kepada Tuhan. Ini bagaikan motivasi untuk berbuat kebaikan dan berkarya bagi komunitas kita, masyarakat adat tetaran tinggi Borneo. Puji Tuhan dimuliakan di atas ini semua. So, uh, that's uh, from Ilyas. Krayan is how many hours from Barrio, Dr. Poli? 10 hours. Uh, on the four-wheel drive? Oh, on the four-wheel drive is about uh, two hours lah. So walking is 10 hours. Okay, all right. So before we proceed to our final agenda for today, which is the award ceremony for the Innovation Challenge, uh, anybody else would like to say a few words? Uh, Farina, are you ready? Uh, Joe, there's a note from uh, Lian uh, in the chat. Oh, hold on. Oh, okay. Um, from David, is it? Yeah, from the one from David. Yeah, Yeah. okay, from David. Let me read that. Uh, on a side note, Yudimas has a special place in our personal history, among so many others, the Labang family home, built originally as a large Christmas holiday home to house all our relatives returning for Christmas. To evolve into an ongoing and sustainable business, Yudimas taught us to be a lodging provider. We had relatives for Christmases and our Yudimas family in between. So thank you. So that's the message from David. Uh, it's the other way around, David. I think we are very blessed for you to share that piece with us, honestly. Uh, you don't have to do that, but you're willing to do that. Uh, we, we are very happy to be there. Uh, thank you very much from us. It's our Shangri-La. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not the same. Uh, walking in the morning, sitting next to the fireplace, having a black cup of coffee. Uh, I don't know how to describe. So anybody else? I do have a theory, actually. I mean, whenever you go to Barrio, the things that you will experience, apart from all the nice things, is the food. The pineapple tastes sweeter. The Maggi Mee, yeah. 10 times better than what you have. I, I, I swear to God, the best Maggi Mee is the Maggi Mee in Barrio. So ask those that have been there. Uh, it's never the same, whether it's the Maggi curry or ayam with uh, two, two egg on top. Uh, I have a theory actually, I mean, I've been researching why food tastes so good. Uh, it seems that at higher altitude, our taste receptor on the tongue uh, is more susceptible to certain chemical, so it tastes better and might be the reason why. <laughs> I, can, I can provide the link to, to the paper and maybe that's why Pauline probably looked much sweeter up there and also down here as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, anybody else to say a few things before we proceed? So that's true. I will share the paper. I'm not joking. There is a reason why our taste is, but but honestly, the pineapple is the best. The Maggi meat is the best. The white chili fried with uh, the anchovies with uh, hot uh, rice is the best. Uh, I cannot describe that. <laughs> uh, Farina, are you ready, Farina? Yes. Okay. So I would like to invite Farina to um, explain about the competition that been organized uh, by the team led by AP Dr. Halikul. And the session today is to provide the awards to the winners of the competition. Farina, please continue. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jahari. So uh, basically on the 19th of September, we have organized a pre-workshop for the EBKF Junior Inventive Challenge. Kita ada participant from Sekolah Kebangsaan Rakyat, Sekolah Kebangsaan Nanggar Tebat, Sekolah Kebangsaan Tatau, Sekolah Kebangsaan Ibnu Khaldun dan juga daripada Pusat Internet Bengoh and Pusat Internet Sungai Bandung. 
the objective of the competition is to the objective of the workshop, the pre workshop, uh, was to coach the participant and later mentor the students who wants to join the competition. Students were required to send presentation of their ideas and product, which related to innovation and also trees principle. So without further ado, we now announce the winner for the EBKF Junior Inventive Challenge. So the third place goes to Sekolah Kebangsaan Rakyat with project entitled The Distant Learning System by Amir Zahir bin Muhammad Zaki. The winner will receive 400 in cash, certificate and innovative trees card. These prizes are sponsored by Academy Science and also My Trees. So let's watch a short clips by prepared by himself. Hi, I am Ahmed Zahir Zafran. And I am Alicia Zahra. We are from SK Raya Kuching, Sarawak. COVID-19 is a pandemic that has killed many people, created havoc and changed our lifestyle. In order to combat COVID-19, we need to use face masks, hand sanitizer, and practice social distancing. But failure to social distancing is the main cause of COVID-19 infections. And so we thought of an idea to create DWS, Distance Warning System. Ame, what does it do? It is a portable device that warns you if you are too close to someone by buzzing. What are the advantages of DWS? One, the advantages of DWS is to remind us of social distancing. And two, there is no need to make or draw lines in school or public places. What are the components used in DWS prototype? The components used in DWS is a used food container, an iron for battery powder device, an ultrasonic sensor to sense the object in front of it, a buzzer to give out the warning sound, a breadboard to give uh, to connect all of the components together. The Arduino board is the brain of the device that controls and instructs all of the components mentioned. And some simple coding that tells the device on what to do and how to react. This is our function analysis diagram that shows how the device works. Now let us demonstrate how the device works. See, it works. Ame, this is a bulky prototype, but imagine if we make it into this size or smaller and can be worn on your lapel easily. We are sure user will always be reminded to keep the social distance. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and together we fight COVID-19. Bye. So next, the winner for second place or runner-up in the EBKF Junior Inventive Challenge goes to Sekolah Kebangsaan Tatau with the project Pengesan Suhu dan Kehadiran by Carolyn Casey Anap Anak Tom. The runner-up will receive 500 cash certificate and innovative trees card. These prizes are supported by Academy Science and My Trees. So let's uh, so let watch the video. Selamat pagi, nama saya Caroline Kesi. Saya pelajar dari Sekolah Kebangsaan Tatau. Tajo inovasi kami adalah sistem pengasahan suhu dan kedatangan. 
ide inovasi kami untuk mencegah jangkitan wabak COVID di sekolah. Kami berhasrat untuk membina satu alat mengesan untuk sekolah. Kami juga ingin mengatasi masalah murid yang bersesakan untuk memastikan murid tidak terdedah kepada jangkitan COVID-19. Untuk mendapatkan inspirasi, kami telah melayari laman web di asnature.org. Di sana, kami menggunakan kata kunci infected, heat sensing, electromagnetic, dan warning. Selepas membuat banyak bacaan, kami telah menjumpai beberapa strategi biologi. Kami memilih strategi-strategi biologi yang berkaitan iaitu mengesan haba persekitaran, bekerjasama sesama ekosistem, tangkap serap atau tapis organisma, memanipulasi cas elektrik dan bertindak balas terhadap penyakit. Prinsip intensif yang dipilih pula adalah persediaan awal, extraction, before hastening dan maklum hati. Berikut adalah model subfield projek kami. Warga sekolah perlu menggunakan satu kios penggerau untuk masuk ke sekolah. Hal ini adalah untuk mencegah jangkitan wabak COVID-19. Ini pula adalah model analisis fungsi yang telah kami guna. Kami berjaya membuat model fungsi tentang bagaimana cara untuk menggunakan kios ini. Model ini dilengkapi dengan sistem global radio magnetik, pengesan suhu infamera dan sistem komputer menggunakan internet. Berdasarkan kami, anda boleh melihat untuk menggunakan kios ini. Mula-mula, murid akan mengimbas stat magnetik untuk mengambil kehadiran. Kemudian mereka akan diperiksa suhu badan menggunakan termometer. Dan akhir sekali, mereka perlu masuk ke dalam kebuk sanitasi untuk membunuh kuman dan virus. Sistem akan membunuhkan penggerak jika ada murid yang mempunyai simptom suhu badan. Komputer akan menghantar amaran ketik kepada pihak sekolah dan penjaga melalui email dan SMS. Dari sudut if dan but, kami mendapati sekiranya kehadiran murid ke sekolah adalah penting semasa pandemik ini. Maka, tindakan memastikan inovasi ini penting untuk mengelakkan kontak dekat dengan guru dan murid. Tetapi, ianya memerlukan pemantauan berterusan agar murid terus menjaga SOP semasa pandemik. Tanpa bacaan dan kaedah inovatif yang sesuai adalah mustahil untuk kami menyampaikan idea kami selepas ini. Segala cadangan dan idea yang kami sampaikan kepada pihak sekolah telah disambut dengan baik sekali. Diharapkan idea ini dapat direalisasikan agar sesuai dengan situasi pandemik di sekolah kami. Jutaan terima kasih kepada pihak Ilmas, Akademi Sains, Mesatrix, Tegas dan KPM kerana memberi peluang kepada kami. Sekian, terima kasih. Ladies and gentlemen, and the winner in the EBKF Junior Inventive Challenge goes to Sekolah Kebangsaan Nangga Tebat with the project Sistem Pergerak Banjir by Seattle Daniel Ferguson Anak Sampo. The winner will receive 600 in cash, certificate and innovative trees card. The, these prizes are sponsored by Academy Science and My Trees. So now we play the winning video from Seattle Daniel Ferguson for project Sistem Pergerak Banjir. <music> Pada hari ini, saya ingin berkongsikan satu idea inovasi yang kami telah rancang untuk pertandingan IBKF 8 pada tahun ini. 
Mari kita lihat kamar sekolah kami yang terkesan akibat banjir pada 23 Mac 2021 yang lalu. Walaupun kawasan sekolah tidak mengalami hujan, tetapi kami turut terjejas akibat limpahan air dari hulu sungai. Ha, nampak tak tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian? Kasihan bukan? Jadi dengan bimbingan guru, kami ingin merangkak satu alat pengarah banjir sebagai tanda amaran bahawa kawasan sekolah akan terkesan akibat banjir kilat. SK Nanga Tebat terletak di kawasan penalaman dan dari sudut geografinya amat terdedah dengan banjir kilat. Kami menampak inspirasi dari asnature.org di bawah kata kunci carian banjir dan amaran. Setelah meneliti beberapa strategi biologi, kami memilih dua strategi biologi yang berkaitan itu yang pertama. Maluman memberi sistem amaran awal dan yang kedua tumbuhan meningkat di atas banjir. Prinsip inventif yang dipilih pula adalah tindakan persediaan awal prinsip 10, tindakan kematan prinsip 11, malum balas prinsip 23 dan kebaikan dari musibah prinsip 22. Sufil untuk projek ini adalah warga yang duduk di dalam kawasan sekolah memerlukan pengerah banjir untuk memalumkan mereka mengenai banjir. Apabila pengerah banjir berbunyi, ia akan memalumkan warga yang duduk di dalam kawasan sekolah untuk bersedia sedi serta memalumkan kepada warga yang duduk di kawasan luar sekolah. Bagi model fungsi pengerak banjir pula, apabila air banjir menyentuh penderia air, ia akan memberikan malum malas kepada mikro pengawal dan memberi arahan untuk membunyikan buzzer. Seterusnya, apabila buzzer berbunyi, ia akan memberi amaran kepada warga yang duduk di dalam kawasan sekolah. Berikut merupakan rakaran awal prototipe bagi projek yang ingin kami hasilkan. Inovasi ini dihasilkan menggunakan Mega Uno dan juga pendera air untuk memberi maklum awal mengenai banjir. Selain itu, power bank digunakan sebagai pembekal kuasa dan wayar untuk menghubung semua. Bazar bertindak sebagai pemberi amaran awal berlakunya banjir. Inovasi sebegini bertujuan untuk memberi amaran awal kepada warga sekolah akan banjir kilat yang akan menimpa kami. Inovasi ini juga adalah sebagai tindakan persediaan awal prinsip 10 dan sebagai tindakan keselamatan prinsip 11. Inovasi ini merupakan maklum balas prinsip 23 tentang limpahan air sungai yang terjadi di kawasan Nangah Tebat. Inovasi ini juga merupakan kebaikan dari musibah prinsip 22 untuk membantu warga sekolah bersedia untuk mengelakkan kerosakan yang lebih teruk serta berbahaya terutamanya kepada murid yang tinggal di asrama dan seterusnya tidak menjajaskan aset sekolah yang perlu dilindungi. Sekiranya Bencana alam seperti banyak kilat sememangnya kita tidak dapat elakkan. Maka, ide inovasi sebegini amatlah diperlukan di kawasan pendalaman, contohnya seperti di SK Nanga Tebat. Tetapi, kita harus sentiasa bersedia dan tidak lalai dalam menghadapinya di samping menjaga kasanah alam di sungai Tebat supaya tidak tercemar. Harapan kami adalah idea inovasi ini akan menjadi realiti kerana ia adalah satu perkara yang sangat relevan dengan situasi yang kami hadapi saban tahun. Diharapkan pertandingan ini dapat membantu kami untuk merealisikan harapan dan perasaan kami. Anak-anak didik pendalaman. Sekian dari saya. Terima kasih. Jumpa lagi. Bye-bye.
So for EBKF Junior Inventive Challenge, the organizer also provide awards for Best Educational Product Awards. The winner for Best Educational Products Award goes to Sekolah Kebangsaan Ibnu Khaldun with Project Inovasi Model Simna. Model Inovasi Simna. The winner for Best Educational Product will receive 500 cash certificate and innovative Chris card. Prizes are sponsored by Tegas. Ladies and gentlemen, let's watch this short video. Selamat datang ke pameran inovasi Model Sigma SK Agama Ibnu Khaldun Samarani. Dalam memahami fenomena gerhana bulan Enggara matahari Dengan kos 
penyediaannya yang rendah menjadikannya lebih efektif untuk digunakan di sekolah. Ia juga mudah disimpan, ringan dan mudah dibawa ke mana-mana. Itu saja perbentangan saya pada hari ini. Sekian, terima kasih. And consolation prizes for EBKF Junior Inventive Challenge goes to Project Transport Dustbin, Project Automatic Hand Sanitizer, and the Ambulance from Sekolah Kebangsaan Rakyat. And lastly, Project Consolation Luggage 8 Superset Class from Project from Sekolah Kebangsaan Ibnu Khaldun. Consolation prizes will receive 300 ringgit, a certificate, and innovative trees card. Prizes are sponsored by My Trees. So congratulations to all winners. We hope that this will spark the young minds to innovate in the future. Thank you to all sponsor from Academy Sign, My Trees, and Tegas. Uh, over to you, Dr. Johari. Thank you very much, Farina. And once again, congratulations to all the eight groups from the schools. Uh, to be honest, all our winners actually. I'm one of the judge. Uh, Prof. Nara is the head judge for the competition. And we were having very hard time to actually pick the winners. To be honest, all our winners. Uh, just a bit of information before I pass to Prof. Nara to comment about the competition. Uh, the quality of the solution from all the school are very, very high. Uh, bear in mind, these are primary school students. I don't think I can do better than them in, in terms of coming up with the solution. So the uh, Second run up just now was the solution on how to measure the temperature. Second one uh, is, uh, sorry, the, the second run up was the distance uh, alert uh, for COVID-19, um, maintaining social distancing. Second is the temperature checker and the winner is actually the flood monitoring system. So one thing that I think we should notice that uh, the, the, the school children, uh, are basically solving problems which which is very relevant to what they are experiencing, um, and and that is very interesting. Uh, Prof. Nara, I would like to invite you to say a few words about the competition and how this fit into the overall, uh, I would say, innovation system for the rural community as well. Uh, I know many of you are amazed at what you saw. Well, to tell you the truth, me too. I I just can't explain how this happened. Okay, but uh, the credits for this training goes to Dr. Halikul Anando, Farina Othman, and Tim George Bintu. I mean, these guys did the training themselves. And it is a half a day training of the teachers and the teachers got the group together. And this is the outcome. Thank you very much and congratulations to the team. Amazing outcome from Unimas. And my Tris president, when he saw the outcomes, he said uh, the solar system one, he says, let's turn it into a product. So he says it has got product potential. That's why it got the special award from Tagas, right? So the other three, uh, well, they use Tris principles like experts and came up with a real systems model. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Prof. Thanks, Prof. Nara. Uh, Dr. Aliko, any um, feedback from you as the main trainer for trees? I saw Dr. Aliko just now. Thank you, Dr. Joe. Yeah, yeah Dr. Aliko, yes. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much uh, for giving me the opportunity to uh, give some, yeah, uh, some time to, to talk about this uh, competition. Actually, uh, yeah, uh, I'd like to thank all the teams, uh, especially Farina and team, and also, of course, uh, to Prof. Nara for giving us the opportunity to conduct a uh, work call. I know it's uh, a bit uh, uh, well, weird to do innovation in a very short period of time, but uh, as we believe that trees uh, provide you a rapid uh, work call solution uh, to generate a work call idea of innovation. So, uh, I, I just follow Prof. Nara because trees, uh, we want to penetrate into uh, our community in the rural area, especially. So this is a pilot study. So of course, uh, next journey is, uh, I have a discuss uh, with a long discussion with Prof. Nara to bring, this is like uh, our short uh, showcase, a pilot study. 
so hopefully uh, the coming uh, the coming one will be uh, go uh, physically to the uh, maybe uh, Bakalalan or Long Banga, whatever. So we bring the idea. So thank you very much. Thanks all uh, for supporting us. So hopefully we can bring this idea uh, to pro prosperous our community. Thank you, Joe. Over to you. Thank you, Dr. Likul. Uh, Dr. Likul, Dr. Farina, um, maybe we should invite the, uh, the teacher. I think they are here in the Zoom call, isn't it? Any of the teacher would like to say uh, something about the competition? Or maybe the student themselves. I, I saw a few names just now. Maybe we can invite Chigu Nolin to, to speak up. I think Chigu Nolin is there. Ah, Chigu Nolin Aban. Chigu? Chigu Nolin from which school, Dr. Uh, Ibn Khaldun. Oh, Ibn Ibn Khaldun. Eh? Chigu Nolin? Ataupun ada Chigu yang lain ke? Would like to say a few words? Ah, Cikgu Nolin, yes, Cikgu. Ah, hello, ya. Yeah. Silakan, Cikgu. Sorry, saya driving sekarang. Oh, okay, bahaya tu, Cikgu. <laughs> I'm driving. Ah, uh, it's okay, Cikgu, Cikgu. Please drive. It's okay. Sorry for disturbing okay. you. Yeah, congratulations. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Cikgu Nolin. Any other Cikgu would like to say a few words ataupun ada pelajar-pelajar daripada sekolah? Uh, or your 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 wish to Dr. Halikul and Prof. Nara. Trace level two, anybody? Are you ready for trace level two? Uh, the what 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 are the principles, Dr. Halikul? They they have <laughs> gone through the 40 inventive principle. Okay, uh, anybody can pronounce the original acronym, Trace. Uh, we'll <laughs> buy KFC dinner plate for that person. <laughs> Say so that aloud. Good. I don't think Prof. Nara can say that as well. <laughs> Prof. Nara, can you try Tris in Russian? Theoria Russiania is a Bretatelsky Zadat. You look at Wikipedia. I know you're looking at Wikipedia. <laughs> so anybody would like to say a few words from the school? Uh, thank you very much for joining the competition. Uh, I always tell the student, joining is actually the best thing. It's not about winning, but I'm sure you have gained a lot of knowledge. Maybe, so, yeah. uh, maybe you can call for Chigu Hajiba. Chigu Hajiba. Yes, Chigu Hajiba Sepawi. Would you like to say a few words, Chigu Hajiba? Maybe um, your feedback about the competition and maybe the way forward for the students and the school. So three, there are five levels. Level five is equivalent to a PhD. Uh, Prof. Nara, if, if I'm not wrong, eh? level four is equivalent to a master. Prof. Nara himself is uh, level three as practitioner and also trainer for level three. Uh, Dr. Halikul is level two, Dr. Halikul? Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 level yeah. two. Yeah. Yeah. Me, level 0 0.5. <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> uh, forgotten already the 40 principle. Uh, but Prof. Nara, probably um, just a comment from you. Are you planning to bring this to the community, Tris, or already in the community? Unfortunately, not yet. But, but I believe uh, yeah, what, what they, they do, I think in, in Long Lamai, I think what they practice is probably some form of Tris, maybe not in a formalized and structured way. Uh, I, I bet we will experience the same thing whereby we will learn as much from them. Uh, as they learn from trees. Uh, I, I think what they practice, to be honest, it fits into trees very, very well. Yeah, we have already done road shows to uh, Long Tanit, uh, Barrio, uh, and also uh, to Long Lamai. I mean, we have done some road shows, and this is just a start. Every community we present it to, they are eager to come in. You know, when I went with uh, Dr. Pauline to Long Tanit, I mean, uh, she saw me present in Barrio and she said, okay, uh, Nara, I can present better you better than you. And she did a better job in presenting to the community as an ambassador. So really, uh, the remarkable thing is we have a fantastic team and uh, we need to get ourselves and our act together. I can tell you, uh, we won't leave anyone out. Uh, thank you, Prof. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to call upon Chegu Hajiba. Uh, the, it was, I think, muted just now. Chegu Hajiba, please. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Okay, uh, saya nak mengucapkan thank you very much for the Unimas atas uh, peluang yang diberi. Even though it's only a short times given, 
kita coba untuk meng, mem, membawa murid kita berinovasi lah. Okay. Dan peluang ini saya rasa adalah peluang yang terbaik kami rasa. And then thank you also yang atas kerjasama yang diberi oleh pihak tegas juga atas bimbingan daripada uh, Dr. Liku dan juga uh, Puan Perina. That's all. Thank you very much. Terima kasih Cikgu Ajiba. Just to probably let all the participants and attendees know about TRIS. Uh, it's actually part of the curriculum. Dr. Liku, if I'm not mistaken, it's under RBT. I'm not sure whether it's uh, Form 2. No, no. Primary, primary 6, uh, Primary 5 order. Ada juga. Primary 5 kan? Dah yes, ada so TRIS RBT, kan? RBT. Yes. RBT. Yes. So, yes. Uh, it's part and parcel of uh, the, the new, I would say, it's only the basic, lah. It's only the basic. Uh, yeah, but I think it's more than enough, Cikgu Ajibah. I think yeah. it's more than what the adults probably have gone through. <laughs> so apart from computational thinking and also the TMK, and also now we have uh, trees, uh, it's really good. But uh, we, we need an avenue for the student and the teachers to share their ideas and tackle real-world problem. And uh, uh, we hope... Dr. Alikul and Prof. Nara is going to be an annual thing and we will involve uh, more school in the future uh, and hopefully we can do a dedicated TRIS, um, I would say, uh, fair, TRIS fair next year, inshallah. And inshallah. we can, of course, couple that with EBCAF next year as well. So thank you very much, everybody. I would like to recap our session today. It's now 3.46, just nice. Um, so we had three main agenda for this session. First of all, once again, on behalf of EBKF, on behalf of UDMAS, on behalf uh, of ECT, we would like to again congratulate the eight recipient of the community scholars from all the communities. Um, thank you very much for all your contribution. We hope that this small recognition will motivate you further to, to contribute to the community. And based on Dr. Roger's suggestion just now, is looking really good. Uh, we will work closely with the community and the individuals to ensure that the community scholar is not just a name, but you yourself as a recipient and other recipient in the future. And more importantly, the community that you are serving will benefit from that recognition. Secondly, we um, had a few show last night from Elena Murang from the um, puppet show and also the um, sound, sonic sound card from Dr. Hasnizam. Uh, those just a very small of representation of the uh, cultural product from the community. There are so many, many more. Uh, Dr. Soba is interested to uh, compile all the folklore, the songs and so on, uh, in order to share the beautiful cultural product from the community. Uh, I, I believe, uh, we, we can really learn a lot and also appreciate from all these uh, products from the community. And the last session just now is the award for the uh, Innovation Challenge, TRIS. Uh, once again, congratulations to all the school, all the teachers for uh, assisting your students. And I think the most important is to all the students that have participated, well done. You have really, really done well. Congratulations to you. Uh, your, your teachers and the school for producing such an excellent solution uh, under a very, very short time. Uh, again, I want to say that uh, you, you have done much, much better than many, many of us, the adults that have gone through TRIS. So please continue to uh, use TRIS in, in your uh, daily life, in your study and so on. And please continue to collaborate with the faculty at uh, UNIMAS and also at ECT. Uh, for future trees project. With that, thank you very much. Don't forget to join the next session if you're interested. And I think most important, please join the closing ceremony at 4.50. And take care. Bye-bye. Uh, uh, one minute, Joe. Uh, yes, just Prof. One thing, one thing to add. Uh, yep. Now, uh, from the announcement of community scholars yesterday and today, uh, it is not formally recognized in the university. So anything to be formally recognized in the university, we have to go through Senate. And let me make a commitment today that our team, uh, well, I mean, across the institutes, right? Uh, and together with faculties, if possible, whoever wants, we will make a joint uh, paper to Senate to be presented in the next possible meetings. Thank you, Prof. Thank you for the commitment and very happy to see 
uh, the commitment from ECT and the team. So once again, thank you very much to everybody and take care. And uh, we'll see you next year in the next EBKF 9. Thank you. Bye-bye. Back to ECT Hello. and the team. Bye-bye, Joe. Bye. Thank you. Take care.